but Romans chapter three, Romans chapter three, one of the most important, uh, one of the more, most important chapters in all of the Bible. And so, before we get to the verses that God wants us to read, why don't we start with this simple fact? And the simple fact is this: life is not all about me. Life is not all about me. Contrary to what your mama's told you, what your daddy's told you, what your grandparents told you, what your preschool teacher told you, contrary to what your kindergarten teacher told you, life is not all about me. In fact, one of the verses that many of you love to quote to talk about how the world revolves around you, I think it actually says something totally different. Look at what John 3.16 actually says. John 3.16 says, for God loved the world. Underline that phrase, the world. For God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that everyone, underline that word everyone, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Now, notice the phrase, the world. Go back to that. You see, while God loves you and I individually, we need never forget that we're not the only ones that He loves. While God loves you personally, you need never forget that you are not the only object of His affections. Please remember this. Please remember that everything God does to you and for you must fit in His plan for the whole world. Everything that God does to us and for us must fit in His plans for the whole world. You do understand that while God has a specific plan for your life, that plan for your life personally must fit in His plan for the whole world. Look at what the Bible says, 2 Corinthians 5, 19. It says, God was in Christ. He's telling us the plan of God. God was in Christ reconciling the world. There's that phrase again, the world to himself, no longer counting people, sins against him. So what's he saying? He's saying God's plan has always been to save the whole world, not just us. You're saying, Randy, why is this so important? Why is it important for Jennifer to remember that? Why is it important for Katrina to remember that? Why is it so important for us to remember that? Why? Because if we make our faith in God self-centered, we'll always be frustrated. If we make our faith in God self-centered, we'll always be aggravated. You do understand that while God loves you individually, and He's working in you, His work in you individually is so that He can bless other people as well. So while God is pruning us and he's molding us and he's shaping us, it's not just for us. He's doing it for all the people that we contact with. He's doing it for all the people that we influence. You see, many of you have heard my testimony, and I went through a decade, not 10 days, not 10 months. I went through 10 years of suffering. And it was near the end that I finally decided and it finally dawned on me that much of my suffering was not just for me. That God was putting me through suffering for you. God was putting me through suffering for you. God was putting me through suffering. Why? So that I would be a better husband. I would be a better father. I would be a better pastor. I would be a better friend. God was causing me to suffer for a sorry old you. And I'll be honest with you, I struggle with that. When he told me that, I was like, well, God, I don't want to suffer for you, for anybody else. I'm willing to suffer for me, but I'm not willing to suffer. God's like, I didn't really ask your opinion, did I? And some of you right now, you're frustrated with God because you just don't understand why you're going through tough times. You just don't understand why you're going through frustration. And God's like saying, you know what? It might not be for you. 